Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss our next topic on a CYGST biochemistry optional subject that is protein. In the previous lecture, we have seen our amino acids which are the main constituents of the protein. Now let's consider our next topic that is our protein. So let's start our discussion with the protein. Let's go first for the protein introduction. Here we are having. So let's start with the protein introduction. Most abundant molecules in a earth or in a living being is a protein molecule, which is a micromolecule in the cell. Composed of a large number of amino acids. In the previous lecture, we have seen that amino acid joins to give the formation of an polypeptide chain. And when n number of an amino acids are joined, that resulted into formation of an polypeptide chain or a large molecule of an protein. So here in a protein, we can say that there is a presence of an amino acid. So when we are considering uh, any protein, that protein is consists of an amino acid. So proteins are composed of an amino acid base basically, which are arranged in one or more polypeptide chain containing carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen and occasionally there is a presence of an sulfur. So in a protein generally there is a presence of carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. These proteins are having variable size and physical properties. They are having sometimes only polypeptide chain. Along with polypeptide chain, there are certain other groups are also present. So we can consider that a protein that consists of a carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur, which are the atoms from the amino acid, along with that it can have the other type of the groups attached or sometimes ions are also found. They account for the diversity of structure and biological function. Their function are definite and they are having a diversity in their structure. They are having different size, different shape, their functions are also different. These are the heteropolymers of the amino acid. So large number of N molecules are included or comes under the heading protein. Therefore, the classification of these protein molecules are very important. As it is having a large number of N group for the classification, in that classification, we can consider that there is a different way of N classification. So, let's consider a classification of N protein molecules. So here we are going to consider the classification. Proteins are classified on the basis of a size, on the basis of a shape, and on the basis of a function they perform. So we are having the three basis for the classification of a protein, that is the size, shape, and the function. On the basis of size, on the basis of size, they are classified into three classes: simple protein. Conjugated proteins and complex or derived proteins. So, on the basis of a size, we are having three classification that is a simple protein, conjugated protein, and complex or the derived protein. So, we are considering that these are the three classes on the basis of a size. Let's consider the first that is a simple protein. These are the proteins which on hydrolysis gives only amino acid or residues. So only amino acids are present in this protein or the polypeptide chains are present which act as a protein minority and on hydrolysis they only give the amino acid. So we are considering the example for this. Example is albumin and globulin. Most of the time we are considering the simple proteins which are having only the polypeptide chain. That means on hydrolysis of albumin or globulin, we are only going to get uh, amino acid residues. This albumin, globulin, these are present in A and a V. So this is the example. This uh, protein might be having the 
सिंपल now let's consider the next class of the protein on the basis of size that is a conjugated protein in conjugated protein there is the presence of protein part as well as a non protein part so on hydrolysis gives protein as well as a non protein part so the proteins which on hydrolysis gives protein as well as a non protein part are called as a conjugated protein the non protein part present in a conjugated protein is called as a prostatic protein so it is a combination of an two molecule that is a polypeptide chain plus a another molecule which resulted into formation of an conjugated protein here we can consider some example a lipoprotein lipoprotein means it is a combination of a lipids and proteins lipids combine with protein to give the formation of an lipoprotein example is a beta lipoprotein in the blood the next is a hemoprotein hemoprotein it is a combination of an tropyrimine that is called as a cimin and a protein molecule so this results into formation of an a hemoprotein example is hemoglobin the next is a glycoprotein glycoproteins are is a combination of a carbohydrate and a protein so protein combines with the carbohydrate moiety and gives the formation of an a glycoprotein example is the immunoglobulin we are having another example that is a metalloprotein metalloprotein it is a combination of a metal ion and a protein moiety for example ferritin we can consider another class that is a nucleoprotein or another example nucleoprotein in which there is a presence of nucleic acid and a ribosome so we are having nucleoprotein then next is a phosphoprotein this phosphoprotein having a phosphate group attached to it and protein moiety that resulted into the formation of an phosphoprotein example is casein present in the milk so these are the different examples in where we are having the conjugated protein conjugated protein it is a combination of a protein moiety and a non protein part non protein part we call it as a prostatic group so here we are having prostatic group example is a lipoprotein combination of a lipid plus protein hemoprotein combination of a heme plus protein then glycoprotein combination of a carbohydrate plus protein we are having metalloprotein with combination of metal ions and the protein nucleoprotein has the nucleic acid and a protein and phosphoprotein in which phosphate group is present which results into the different classes so here are the example for the conjugated protein now let's consider next that is a complex or derived protein complex or derived proteins are the proteins which are obtained or derived from the action of physical chemical or enzymatic agents on the natural protein so these are the derived or complex these are either formed by the action of physical agents chemical agents or the enzymatic agents on the naturally occurring protein for example physical agents which we can use these are pressure temperature or we can have a change in the ph or acidity and basicity so this gives the change in the structural or composition of the protein so these proteins are called as a complex or derived protein what are the example example are rna polymerase proteasomes and denatured proteins these are the example for the complex or derived protein so in a complex or derived protein these are the proteins which are obtained from the physical chemical or enzymatic agent on natural protein so these are the derived from the natural therefore they are called as the derived protein here we have taken the example of a physical agent that is the pressure and the temperature and simplest example to remember is rna polymerase proteasomes or it is a denatured protein so on the basis of size they are classified as a simple protein conjugated protein and the complex protein
So these are the three classes. Simple proteins only having amino acid. Conjugated protein having protein plus a prostatic group and complex or derived protein. They are derived by physical, chemical, or enzymatic action on the natural protein. So this is on the basis of an science. Now let's consider next classification. That classification is based on the shape. On the basis of a shape, they are classified into two classes. That is a fibrous protein and the globular protein. So here we are considering a fibrous protein and the globular protein. Now it is simple. Fibrous protein and globular protein to remember on the basis of a shape. Let's consider first a fibrous protein. These are fibrous protein. They are having thread or rod-like structure. So the shape of these are a thread-like. Therefore, they are calling it as a fibrous or <coughs> rod-like structure. Therefore, they are fibrous protein. They are insoluble in a water. They are insoluble due to the presence of a R group which is organic in a nature for the amino group and hence it is insoluble in a water. In fibrous protein, polypeptide chains are arranged in long stands held together, long stands held together by extensive hydrogen bonding and disulfide bonding. This extensive hydrogen bonding is present in between hydrogen of the amino and a carbonyl of the oxygen. So we are considering that this hydrogen bonding gives the more stability to the fibrous protein and also the disulfide bonding which is present in the cysteine amino acid. So when two cysteines are apart from each other by seven amino acids, they give the formation of disulfide bond which also gives the stability to the fibrous protein and importantly these fibrous proteins can be stretched or they can be contact. This fibrous protein can be stretched twice to their length. Let's consider the example of this fibrous protein that is a collagen and a keratin which is present in the hair. Here we are having an example. Now you can see here a thread like structure. A thread like Structure. So these are called as a fibrous protein. They are called as a fibrous protein. Okay. So this fibrous protein have appearance as a thread. Therefore, they are fibrous. They are insoluble in a water. Polypeptide chain arranged in a long stand held together by hydrogen bonding and a disulfide bonding. These are contracted or stretched twice to their length and example simple to remember is the keratin or collagen here we are having shown a figure which shows how fibrous protein will look like now let's consider the next class that is a globular protein on the basis of their shape globular proteins they are having either globular or spherical in a shape they are having globular or spherical in a shape Polypeptide chain folded shape or polypeptide chains get folded. Due to that folding, we are having a spherical shape. It is stabilized again by the hydrogen bonding and disulfide bonding and they are soluble in a water. The reason is that the hydrophobic nature of this R group and hydrophilic nature of the carbonyl and the amino which resulted into solubility water for the globular proteins. Here we can consider the example of a globular protein myoglobin, albumin and globulin. And one of the important example is hemoglobin. Here we are showing the structure with an hemoglobin. Now you can see here a hemoglobin. This is having a spherical or circular shape. Profiling ring is shown here. This spherical shape is resulted or this spherical shape is due to the presence of an here you can see a folding, here you can see the folding and these foldings are resulted into the globular or spherical shape. So on the basis of an shape
shape proteins are classified into two classes that is the fibrous protein and subglobular protein fibrous protein they are having thread like appearance they are having a polypeptide chain which is shows hydrogen bonding and gives the stability and they are insoluble in a water while in globular protein they are having globular or spherical shape polypeptide chain is folded and is stabilized by hydrogen and disulfide bonding they are soluble in a water example myoglobin albumin globulin hemoglobin here we have from the hemoglobin structure so let's consider next classification that is classification based on the biological function or the activity proteins have number of and biological function or number of and biological activity therefore we have to consider this classification and this classification gives a number of and classes for the proteins which ranges from enzyme to the other type of the protein so we will consider one by one the first class on the basis of an biological function is enzyme we are all familiar about the enzyme the protein which are highly specialized in their function with a catalytical activity a protein which shows a catalytical activity that protein is simply called as a enzyme so most of the biological process happens in the body they are regulated by the enzyme so in all living cells whatever the biological reactions are happen they are happen in presence of an enzyme and they are regulated or catalyzed by the enzyme about 200 different enzymes are recognized and yet there are number of an enzyme have to be recognized with their function now we can see in a figure here the substrate and another myosin which attaches to the active side of the enzyme and that enzyme gives the formation of the product so substrate is get converted into the product and enzyme gives a formation of an complex and this resulted into formation of the product so that is the first class on the basis of an function the next class is a transport protein what is the role of transport protein or what may seem like simply they carry a specific molecule or ion to the different part of the body particularly present in the blood from a different part of the body in blood plasma they are transporting the molecules or ion therefore they are called as a simply a transport protein they carry essential substances throughout the body so what is the role role is to carry the substance from one part to the next part or one part of the body to the tissue level that is the function of an transport protein there are number of an transport protein we will consider the example first that is a hemoglobin we all know that what is the role of hemoglobin it carry oxygen from heart to the body so that is the role of an hemoglobin it takes the oxygen from the earth and it transported to the body that is at the tissue level here you can see a heart which is having the red blood cell these red blood cells are having the hemoglobin which carries the oxygen myosin to the different part a second example is a lipoprotein these are the proteins which carry lipid from liver to the other organ wherever we need of an energy we are getting energy from the lipid and that lipid can be transport from liver to the other organ that is done with the help of an lipo protein so second class is transport protein these are having a function to transport the molecule or ion from one place to the another place now let's consider the next that is a nutrient and skeletal protein so name itself suggests that these proteins are having a function as a nutrient storage or the skeleton so they are the part of the skeleton or they are having a nutrient 
value or nutritional value. Example is casein, which is present in the milk and the plant feed, where there is a presence of a protein as a storage form of the energy. Next class is a defense protein. As name says that the function of this protein is defense. That means they are having the activity or they are associated with the defense mechanism of the body and they are called as a antibody. They are called as a antibody. Example WBC white blood cells. That is the example WBC, which are the examples of an defense protein which are present in the blood. The next is a structural protein. What are structural proteins? These are the proteins which provide biological support and strength to the tissue. These are the proteins which provide biological support and the strength to the tissue. They also serve as a supporting and protecting part. These are proteins which are present most of the time in the outer part of the body or outer line of the body. For example, we can have of keratin of hair and nails. Keratin which is present in the hair and nails. It is having a role of support as well as protection. So this is the class. <coughs> next class we are considering is a regular protein. What is a regular protein? These are the proteins having a regular function or physiological activity. They perform regular functions of the body or physiological activity so they are called as a regular protein and last class on the basis of an function is the other protein these are the proteins whose function are yet not specific or their functions are yet not be determined these are included into the class that is the other protein what is example monoline protein monoline protein these are the proteins Present in the African plants, having intensive sweet taste and used as a non-toxic sweetener in the food. So these are the proteins which present in the African plants only. Then another type, another example of an other type of the protein is the anti-freezing protein. These are the proteins present in the blood which prevent blood from freezing in the lower temperature. Particularly, this is found in a Antarctica fisherman where they live in a lower temperature and this protein is secreted into the body in the blood. Due to this protein or due to presence of this protein, the freezing of the blood or clotting of the blood does not happen. So this is the classification of the protein on the basis of an function. So we have considered on the basis of an function we are having the classification of the protein that is first is the enzyme. The proteins which act as a catalytical agent in the biochemical reaction they are called as the enzyme. Then we have seen the transport protein. What is transport protein? They carry a molecule from one place to the another place in the body. Simply they are having a function to transport the essential nutrients from one part to the another part. Then we have considered next plant that is a nutrient and skeleton protein. These are the present, these are the proteins which are present in the nutrient or which are having a function or which gives the support for the skeleton. Then next we have seen a defense protein. What is defense protein? Defense protein is a protein which involved in the defense mechanism of the body. Then we have considered the structural proteins. What is structural protein? Structural proteins are the proteins which found or which give support or strength to the body. Then we have seen for example of the structural protein that is a keratin or keratin which is present in hair or nails. Then we have considered next class that is a regular protein which are having the regular physiological activities and last we have considered the other protein their function is not a specific they are they are only synthesizing they are needed simple example to remember is other protein is the anti-freezing protein which is present in the blood
blood which prevents the freezing of the blood from the lower temperature so classification of proteins is based on the three properties that is size shape and function on the basis of size they are classified into three classes on the basis of an shape they are classified into two classes and on the basis of an function they are classified into the seven classes okay so here we will stop the discussion regarding the classification of the protein thank you very much for watching this video